around uh, helping people, uh, what you've been doing in, in your lives, praying for people, all the stewardship you've done, as well as your giving. This past week, we received $1,320 in, in our offerings, and we thank you for that. God thanks you. Thank you for giving these difficult times. But right now, let's honor him with the singing of the doxology for all he has done for us and continues to do for us. She's going to stand, stand and we're going, she's going to play every once and then we'll sing the doxology. Simon, son of, of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. And you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Can I say to you, this is the word of God. Father God, I ask right now through the power of your Holy Spirit, you bless us. Bless me and help me, Father God, to, to speak your words today clearly, distinctly. And help me to speak them in a loving, caring way. Offer this in the name of Jesus Christ. The strong Son of God. Amen and amen. This is the third time that Jesus in the book of John appears to disciples after his resurrection. The other two, one was on the, the day of the resurrection where he caught him through the clock, went through the doors in his, in his body that he, nothing could stop him. He just walked through walls as far as that goes because he had his heavenly body on there. That encounter, you know, uh, first encounter, he told them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. The second one was a week later because one, one, disciple, one of the disciples was not present. That, that, that man, Thomas, Thomas said he wouldn't believe unless he could put his hands in Jesus' uh, something where he'd been pierced by the nails and and we've been pierced to the side with a spear. It's just like put my hands there, I won't believe. Again, Jesus enters the same way and shows Thomas that. And after he saw them, he said, peace be with you. Now this is two appearances that he makes according to John's gospel. After he had told the women to tell the Tell them, tell them to go to Galilee. Go to Galilee. And then he will appear to you. So he's already appeared to them twice before Galilee in this day. And so they, they make the trek 80 miles. It's 80 miles from, from Jerusalem 
to where they were told to go in Galilee. They make the trek there, and they're there. We know the rest of the scripture. They went back fishing. And fishing. Peter said, I'm going fishing. And, and six others or seven others said, we'll go, we'll go with you. And they get out there and they catch nothing. And then Jesus on the on the shoreline, they didn't really recognize him as Jesus. He asked if they had any fish. He had a fire going over there. And he told them to drop their they had on the other side of the boat, and you know, they caught all those fish, and then they realized it was the Lord over there. It was, it was the same thing that happened when Jesus had first called them in Galilee the first time. Come and I'll make you fishers of men. Now Jesus is over there, and it says that Peter jumped out of the boat, clothes and all, and swam to shore. I don't know what he was trying to do or what he was trying to say. And Jesus asked him, Come have breakfast with me. Come have breakfast with me. And he had fish cooking on the grill. The fire was running warm. Smoke was in the air. The smell of fish on the, on the barbie. And they eat. I think this was probably the most uh, <coughs> dysfunctional breakfast that any of them had ever attended. Because it doesn't say they talked much about anything or Jesus talked to them during that time. It just said they had breakfast together. I was thinking back to, to when we had sunrise breakfast here. Oh, that was the first meal we've had together in the church after the sunrise service a couple weeks ago. I remember the... <laughs> it was good to see the church talking. It was good to see the church gathered. It was good to see the church smiling. You know, one of the things that uh, that this COVID uh, thing has done to us is taken our smiles away because many times we, we, we greet people in stores and all, we generally have a mask on. We don't, so they don't see the smile. We don't see the smile on things. I thought about this scripture and I've read it. And I have a sermon that I'm not preaching. This is my sermon right here. I'm not going to preach it. I, I thought I, I would do other something else with it because the more I contemplated and thought about this, it, it, it speaks all sorts of words to me and things to me that makes me want to shout. It wants me to want to shout. I, I remember being at annual conference for the United Methodist Church years ago, long years ago. We were meeting, we met in Athens for years now, but this time we met in Gainesville, Gainesville. And I remember I stayed in the dorm of one of the colleges there. I can't think of the name of the college now. It was where my room was. But one of my friends, they had they got their reservation in. They were staying in, in a hotel. I think it was a Holiday Inn. Uh, they were they, they were there. And remember after lunch, we went to lunch. We went back to the room. We had about an hour, an hour and a half before we, the session started back. And we got into one of them's rooms. I couldn't think of his name, Paul, but I, I came to him. It's Dan Slagle is his name. Dan Slagle. Dan Slagle was a a little fellow, but boy, he was powerful with the Lord. Anyway, we were in the room and we were just talking. We were talking about how we could somehow energize our own lives and energize the lives in our church, what we could do. And I, I remember what Dan Slagle said that day, laying, it must have been his bed, must have been his room, uh, but he was on the bed and he was telling about, he used terms like that I didn't really, that we well, heard, but I, I don't ever use. He said, I've been very slothful. As a pastor, I've been very slothful. In other words, I've been very lazy, is what he was saying. I've been very lazy. I, I haven't done what God had wanted me to do. And I, I'm glad that we're in this room together to talk and pray for one another. And can't wait. He says, I'm looking forward to the day I can gather y'all all together and love your socks off. I remember that word. That just came to me. Why it came to my mind, I don't know. I'm going to love your socks off. This text I'm reading to you this morning. Jesus wants to talk about love and our love for him. Peter, the rock, we call him. Jesus calls him the same thing. Simon, the son of John. This is what he was before he became a disciple. This is what he was on the Sea of Galilee when, when Jesus Saw him the first time. And then he said, I'm, you're Simon, and on this rock I'll build my church. Now he says that after Peter makes a great statement. 
When everybody says he's in Philippi and he's asking everybody that who's saying some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're you're one of the prophets. But who do you say I am? Jesus said, and, and, and Simon stood up and said, You're the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And he said, Flesh and blood hadn't revealed this to you, Simon. From now on, you'll be known as Simon Peter, the rock. And on this rock, I'll build my church. But now he says, he goes back to the same thing. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Let me, let me think about this. I'm sure of all the people at that breakfast, sitting around the fire, eating, listening, Jesus not saying anything at all. I'm sure that Simon Peter's mind was full of, of embarrassment. Jesus already appeared to him twice. But he still couldn't forgive himself for what he had done. You know what he did. In that garden there that night after we got after Jesus arrested, he goes to the to the palace and all that and and people say to him, hey, aren't you one of him? You're one of them. You're one of them Galileans. I can tell by the way you speak. No, I don't know the man. I don't know him. Said they were warming themselves with a fire. You're one of them. I know you're one of them. No, I don't know him. I've never known him. And he did it three times. Then he heard the rooster crow. Then he said he went out and he wept. Bitterly. I don't think bitterly is the right word. I'm sure he cried his eyes out. Because he realized what he had done. Because you see, earlier he said to him, I don't care what everybody else does. I, I'll, I'll follow you anywhere, even to death. I'll follow you. But yet he didn't. I want to ask you today, where is your love? What do you love? Is God in your plans to be in love? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength? That's what we're supposed to do. You know, sometimes we can get caught up in ministry and everything else in life and all sorts of things. And we can, we can love everything in the world. But do we love God? Do we love our Lord Jesus Christ? Is he important to us? Is he really important to you? This day, this time, Simon Peter, Simon's son of John, was going to have to give accountability to his love. And when Jesus said, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He must have been thinking in his mind, John doesn't say, but how can I say I really love you? After the way I turned my back on you. Even though you appeared to me, this is the third time, and I still hadn't grasped what that is. I'm sure, yeah, I, I love you like I love you. I, I, I love you like I, I, I should have a friend's type love for you. But I can't say I love you, really. This is what he's thinking now. Because I realize just how sinful I am. Oh, I can, in my own life, I can identify with Simon Peter. When I have let my life go so far the opposite direction. <clears> that <throat> Jesus is only a notation in the book. Or maybe a thought in my mind. Because my mind and my heart has been set on other things that have become, have become so important to me in my life. I think in this day and time we need to grasp how the love of Jesus Christ is for us in our life. The love of God. We need to recapture that in our lives. If we don't get it recaptured and get it going in our lives, we're going to miss the whole point. I had a post I put on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. A friend of mine had written about how language, how we can use language to say anything we want to say nowadays. Uh, all you got to do is use the colorful words to say the things that you do, that you say, and, it's, and it's, it's, it makes it all okay. This document I got here is called, I wasn't even going to say much about it, but love is making room, it says, making room. That's the theme of, of this paper. 
the North Georgia Conference. Let me tell you something. It sounds good. But love has to be focused to what God is and what God is saying. It has to be. We cannot really love any. I know the next thing is love your neighbor as yourself. I understand that, that Jesus said of the greatest commandments as you love yourself. And we surely should love everyone in every situation in life. But our primary focus must be on loving what God has given us and what God has asked us to be. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to focus on God and God alone. I can remember many times when I was pastor of a church that I'd get to the office every day and I, I was going to pray and I was going to do all this stuff. And I'd get in the office there and I'd start praying. All of a sudden, I remember something I got to do. I, I need to do this. Just so and so wants me to this. I got to do this. And sometimes by walking around doing what they, I forget what I was even there for. Because I get so caught up in the ministry and what the ministry, what people expect you to do and what they expect you to be, that you, you fail to do the things you need the most. And that is communicate and talk and spend time with God. How much time have you spent with God in the last month? Really, I'm not talking about in church. How much time have you spent with God? For the se past several weeks, I've been coming to this church at 6.15 in the morning. And I don't say much. Sometimes I need a job or sometimes I just sit right here where you are, Stan. And I might sit in the back. I might journal a little bit. I might write my prayer down, what I'm praying or what I'm thinking of, what I'm asking God to do. I, I remember the last time I was in here was Friday morning. And I was haggard. Not for lack of sleep or anything else. I was haggard by when I turned my, cracked my truck up. I heard on the news, eight people had been killed. I hadn't looked at the news today before I've been working in the yards and then a 13 year old boy was killed back in March. That's the first thing that hit me on my mind. And I, I flipped the radio off because I don't usually ride with the radio on. I usually ride with me and God talking. <laughs> but when I ride with Paula, we turned it on. And I remember thinking here, I was, God, help me. We're, help me. What's happening to our world? What's happening to our lives? Help me understand, Father God, if you can, what's going on. And so I said, and of course, there were other people here praying as well. And when they left and I was by myself, I was able to really cry my heart out. God. Help me. Help me. What can I do? What can I say? What can I preach? And I heard God clearly say, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you really love me? And I had to regret my life and figure out, yes, I love you, Lord. Be my sheep. Feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. I don't know shepherds who feed sheep, really. They just take them out in the grass. What I'm trying to say is, do we love God enough to allow Him to use us for the kingdom of God around us? Where is our love focused? I can think about of uh, Mother Teresa. I can see her in India. And I can see her washing the wounds of someone who's all scaly and crusty and bleeding. Dying, really. And I can ask, why in the world do you do something like this? Because she saw that person as, as someone like Jesus washing his wounds, washing his wounds. And she scrubbed the floors. She scrubbed in God's house, not her house. But it was done in love. It was done in love and compassion for God, the God that she loved. 
A way to help people? Yes. A way to bind up the wounds? Yes. But a way to love God and let God know that we love Him. And we, we do it not because of, of our pity, but because we love a God who loves us so much that He died on the cross for us. That old rugged cross, the dogwood tree that you were seeing I'm talking about. Our Father's asking us, where's the most important thing in your life? What is it? It has to be for me. It has to be for me. And I, I got to work on this all my life. The rest of my life, what little is left of it. Is that God is all there is. And God's expressed through the person of Jesus Christ. Whom I love. And whom I want to love even more. Who I want to serve. God is calling us, the, the people of God, to, 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 to be in love with him in a special way. Hear, O hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, all your heart. We to love the Lord. That's it. That's, the, that's, that's it for our lives. And if we love our Lord and our God, then we'll love our brother as well. And we'll do things to help our brother. But we will also serve God by being what God asks us to be, obedient to his word. Again, I ask you, how much time have you spent with God in the last month? Father God, I thank you for your church. I thank you for your people. But most of all, I thank you for who you are. You spoke and life came into existence. Father, you created us. Psalms say you knitted us in our mother's womb. You put us together. Father God, forgive us for getting caught up so much in life and the world. Life you created and the world you created, yet we don't see you. Oh, Father God, open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to identify with what Simon Peter went through there. By the fire, that you had to call him back to the courtyard. By the fire when they said, I don't know him, I've never known him. And Jesus said, do you love me? Father God, do we love you? Reinstate us, Father God. Re-empower re us to be the church. In a world that desperately needs to see Jesus. And you'll only see Jesus through us, Father God. One day I know you're going to split, split open the eastern sky and you're going to return. But in the meantime, Father God, we have work to do. It's loving you, caring for you, listening to you, following your word. Father God, teach us to love you. Father, I offer this in the name of Jesus Christ crucified, resurrected Son of God. Amen and amen. 140. Great is thy place. It's 140. Let's all stand if you're able first and last first.
in our beliefs. Also help us to realize, Father God, how much love you showered upon us. Father, help us to love you as never before. Thank you, Father, for the opportunities we have at Mount Gilead to serve you and be Jesus Christ to the world around us. Come through the power of your Holy Spirit. Anoint us, empower us, and use us. For your glory, for your honor. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.